Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to show you how to play Rumble Slam by TT Combat. I've said it before, and I will definitely say it again, Rumble Slam is one of my favorite miniatures games of all time. And I've been playing minis games for quite a while, and this is just a fantastic game. It is fun, it is engaging, it is cinematic. Um, you don't even have to like wrestling, but if you do, you're gonna you're gonna probably love it even more. But you do not have to enjoy wrestling, I don't think, um, to uh, to like this game. It is uh, strategic and tactical at times, and um, you know there's luck because there's dice, and it is it is just great. It is also quite accessible, and I've said before, I have a seven and a half year old who plays the game, and he's he's my um, most regular opponent, and uh, he regularly beats me, and it's, I do not let him win. Absolutely, do not let him win. Um, and it's not just uh, because I often roll poorly. It is because it is an accessible game, which I think says a lot about it. But uh, in the end, it is a fun game. So today I'm going to show you the basics of the game. And I'm going to use some of my um, beautifully uh, sculpted models by TT Combat that I've painted. I won't say beautifully, but I've painted them um, just fine. Um, someone with even more skill than myself would, could do amazing things. And I've seen it uh, with these models but they paint up quite nicely. I've enjoyed almost every model that I have painted. Um, so I'm gonna go quickly through some of the very, very basics of the game, and then we're gonna go through one full turn of the game, and hopefully that will be enough to show you the pretty much the basics of how the game works. Um, there will be things that do not come up in, in this uh, sample turn. Um, maybe that'll be for another video, but just to give you an idea of how the game works, that's what we're um, coming here for uh, for today. So the ring I'm using is the neoprene mat that comes with a starter set. The starter set is an amazing deal. It gets you all of the um, tokens and all of the dice that look like this, not this one, this one. Um, all the dice that you need, um, all the tokens that you need, and then two teams, uh, the rules, and this mat. It's a, a fantastic deal. Um, so if you're thinking about getting into Rumble Slam, I definitely recommend that. If you don't like the teams that are in the starter, you could buy all the other stuff separately. Um, it's just you you get, I think it's like you get a free team when you buy it in the uh, the starter. So I, I have no doubt that it's such a great way to get into the game. Um, but like me, you're probably going to end up with um, dozens of superstars and other teams eventually. So, um, you know, do as you wish, but I recommend going in with the starter. Anyway. So we're playing on this map. It is a 10 by 10 um, grid, gridded map. Um, there are also um, four squares on the corners that represent the turnbuckles in case you were going to climb that turnbuckle um, and then um, later on jump on your opponents. All the, su um, all the wrestlers come with a stat card that looks like this, which I'll show you in a second. Um, there's also, in the start, you get the initiative card you get some reference cards, and there's uh, these are all double-sided. One that has uh, beatdowns and reversals, one that has the basic actions and the wrestler abilities, but I'm gonna uh, talk about those uh, today. Um, and I think uh, looking at this, these cards uh, briefly will help us um, with what's coming up. So you've got your name up here, and these gold stars mean that it's a superstar as opposed to one of the uh, basic wrestlers that you'll get in your, in your basic teams. Uh, on the right hand side, you've got the attack, which is in this case a gold and a silver. You've got your defense, which here is two silver plus one, so whatever you roll and you add one. Grapple is the same, two silver plus one. And his dexterity is again a gold and a silver. You will also see copper dice. So um, his buddy today, Mero Hackjob, has three copper for his defense. So that doesn't sound great. It's three dice, but they are copper. I'm going to look at the dice uh, for you in a, in a second. Um, you've also got the wrestler's weight, which could be one, two, or three, and that usually uh, comes into play when you're trying to pin somebody, um, but there are some other times when weight matters. Um, popularity, um, it's either one, two, or three, and generally that's how many actions it takes uh, to uh, attempt their crowd pleaser. Now, every wrestler has a crowd pleaser. They're all different. Sometimes they affect themselves. Sometimes it affects the whole team. Um, sometimes it affects uh, opponents. Um, but if you want to just try to use your crowd pleaser, um, you would spend, in this case, three actions. If you are the Greek, it's only two actions. 
there are other times when you can attempt your crowd pleaser depending on what you do usually when you pin someone or you throw someone out of the ring or you jump off the top rope so sex successfully so um there are other ways to do that and then there's a throw value so um fang can throw uh, whatever or whomever he's carrying for spaces um, this line over here is how many damage points, uh, how many, uh, what the health is of the wrestler. And in this case, uh, Fang has two, four, six, eight health points. So when he takes eight, um, eight stamina points of damage, he is knocked down. Sorry, knocked out. Knocked down is a different thing. Um, in this box here, you've got all these special abilities and special, um, actions. So these three Special actions here are going to be explained on the back. We'll get to that shortly. And then there's a special ability, which is also explained on the back. Um, here, uh, oh, if the uh, wrestler is a heel wrestler, and if you know wrestling, you know that a heel character is a is a thing. Um, it'll also tell you over here. And then in the back, I'll show you how how you can tell as well. Um, on this side, you've got the star, which is how many action points the wrestler has. The arrow is how many movement points the wrestler has. Down here is uh, the cost to hire that wrestler into your um, for the next match. In this case, it's three hundred thousand dosh. Dosh is the dollar value that um, is used in the game, so it's three hundred thousand dosh to hire Fang. And then the symbol there means that he is part of the Rolling Bones, as opposed to Kaiser's Palace or one of the other casinos that are in the game. On the back. Um, all those special actions are explained. Um, if there's any special abilities, um, it is written down here. It also tells you what the uh, action point cost is, um, which dice you use, which uh, um, how much damage it's gonna do if you're successful, and if appropriate, like in the case of this turnbuckle attack, what the range from the turnbuckle is. So that's a turnbuckle attack. We've got a rope attack. We've got a grapple attack. This is the crowd pleaser. So again, everyone has their own. Um, they are all different. So uh, Fang uh, does affect all friendly wrestlers from Rolling Bones. So um, you definitely want to have him with other Rolling Bones wrestlers. And here is his special um, ability, which um, is um, always active as long as he is standing. And there you go. That's the card. Um, if, if you have a heel character, um, then instead of having the the crowd pleaser cheer you'll have a purple boo um, and that's because on the crowd die you've got um, you've got a blank you've got two boos and you've got three cheers so it is easier to get off uh, the cheer um, so if you're looking for a cheer like most people are um, it's easier um, but often the boo will be more powerful um, but there are no negative effects to rolling anything else whereas if you are um, looking for a cheer but you roll something else it might not be great like if you roll a boo when you're looking for a cheer it's bad it ends your turn you don't want that anyway um those are the basics of the cards um of the of the ring um let's go quickly through the dice before we start our, this match so uh you get a whole bunch of dice and you get things like the copper dice which have one two three blanks a one a two and a three so 50-50 that you're going to get at least one, but you could go up to three. Um, the silver has two blanks, um, a one, two twos, and a three. And of course, gold is the best. You've got one blank, a one, uh, two twos, a three, and a four. So uh, you're, you're like, as likely to get, uh, uh, well, there's only one blank, so you're likely to get um, something on the gold, and you could even get the four. So uh, rolling gold is, of course, going to be better than uh, rolling copper. You also have these little tokens, which are things like um, if you're knocked down. Um, we lay our, our models down, so um, we use this as a knocked out token. Um, if you lose an, uh, an action point for some reason, uh, you lose your action point. This is if you gain an action point. So blue is good, red is bad. If you gain a movement point, if you lose a movement point, um, if you are bleeding, which is never good, bleeding is bad. And then uh, if you get your crowd pleaser off, this is a nice way to um, mark that that's happened. All right, so those are the basic things and that's those are the cards. Um, we're gonna start, um, we're gonna start our game. So uh, let's see uh, how this game works.